Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's August 28th, 2017. Well, summer's almost gone. Have you seen gold today? Oh, and before I start, email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. I'm only about 25 or 30 emails behind now. I should be caught up by the end of the day. But the big story, have you seen the price of gold? precious metals, particularly gold. Gold is now, it's up uh, as we're speaking, it's right around noontime on Monday. Gold's up $15.20 the ounce, according to Kitco, trading somewhere in that 1306, 1307 range. Silver up even higher as a percentage. Silver's at 1734, up 29 cents on the ounce. What does it all mean? Well, John Rab- John Rabino, dollarcollapse.com is here to discuss. John, good morning. Morning, Kerry. Yeah, yeah. It, it almost looked like there was something wrong with the uh, gold chart I pulled up this morning. It was pointing in a, a strange direction. You know, it was like 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 up, almost straight up. Yeah, parabolic yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well. Uh, we'll see if it continues. You know, you never know about these squiggles because there there are factors that affect the short term trading of gold that, that don't have anything to do with the real fundamentals. It's just, you know, what are uh, the futures contracts guys doing and what's the seasonal situation? And um, lately, the seasonal situation and the uh, the technical factors like the commitment of traders report in, in the futures market, th- those have been positive at the same time. And that's been good for gold and silver. They've, they've um, risen pretty steadily for the past, past few months. And today they're uh, they're going kind of parabolic in a little bit of uh, a way. And that's fun to watch, you know, it's and definitely eventually fun. we know it's going to go way up because the fundamentals, the long term fundamentals are so screamingly positive. Uh, and when that big move starts, it'll look something like this. We can't know if this is the big move or if this is just those, you know, technical and seasonal factors playing out. Uh, but it's nice to see it happen. You know, gold above 1300 is uh, is something that people have been pointing to for quite a while. Oh, when it, you know when it breaks above 1300 then it's really going to rocket and, and um I'm not a huge fan of that kind of technical analysis because it seems like trends get broken all the time for mm. no apparent reason and then you know then oh well when the downtrend breaks this then that will plunge you know <laughs> I I don't know when the I, cradle it never will, seems, when the bell breaks yeah. the cradle will rock. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the fact that Long-term fundamentals are so good for gold and silver means that we shouldn't necessarily be paying too much attention to the short-term squiggles because they don't matter because they'll be swamped when the fundamentals really kick in. You know, when the the major fiat currencies of the world start to fall in unison instead of irregularly against each other like they're doing now, uh, then real assets like gold and silver will soar in value. You know, that's going to happen. It's out there somewhere. And in the meantime, we should just be accumulating at a, a nice steady rate and anticipate that someday, you know, the prices we pay today are going to look really cheap and we're going to feel very smart and we'll have the capital that we need to go on and do positive things in life. Uh, Whether this is the beginning of that or not is is unknowable Mm. until, you know, until we have some uh, history behind it. But uh, the fact that it's happening now is fun to watch. You know, it's really exciting to see uh, your bets pay off. You know, the things you own go up in value. So everybody in the gold space should enjoy this, <laughs> however long it lasts. And, uh, you know, there's no real reason to take profits at this point. There's there is reason to add more over time, you know, and that's what we should be doing. Well, I agree with you. But I think that that 1300 number is significant in that it represents so much technical resistance. And gold has, for the past four months, five months, Sean, has not been able to break through it. It's gotten close. It'd get to 1270s, 1280s, then, and then it would pull back. It would get slammed. What's really interesting here is that gold has really, for the past couple of weeks, just kind of continuously gone on, get hit one day or two days, eight, ten dollars the ounce, pop back up the next day, and silver has been in the same boat. So what we're seeing, I guess it's a roundabout way of saying it, what we're seeing here is higher highs, higher lows. And I think that is is a big deal. But we do have the overhang of that COT report. And the COT has not been wrong for over a decade, and I doubt it's going to start to be wrong now. What I'd anticipate is a pullback 
in the next few days. I don't know, haven't looked at the economic data coming up. I think GDP is coming up. So GDP is going to be some crazy number that will be revised down. And that will be the justification to slam gold. And it'll go down to 1280 or 1275 and start consolidating for the next increase. That's that's pretty much my my belief of what's going to happen here, John. Yeah, the, uh, the the past few months have have had two short term technical factors working in favor of the gold and silver market. You know, it's seasonality, uh, which is in Asia. There are seasons when people buy lots of gold, usually when when there are a lot of weddings and stuff like that. And that's happening now. So normally you get lots of demand for precious metals at this time of year. And that that strengthens prices. You know, if you just um, buy in June or July every year and then yeah. sell in the following May, you make a lot of money in gold and silver. You know, you beat the market. And so we're seeing that play out now. And then the commitment of traders report was positive four months ago, um, which also usually leads to higher gold and silver prices. So we had those two things happening together. And very predictably, we got a nice pop in precious metals prices. Well, now those things are starting to reverse out. The commitment of traders report got extremely negative in the last couple of months because speculators saw gold and silver going up and they, they jumped on the long side of the market. They, they bought a lot of long futures contracts. And because speculators trade on momentum and emotion, they tend to be wrong at turning points. And when they get extremely loaded up on one side or the other, that's a sign that a reversal is coming. So they're extremely long right now, which should worry short-term traders in precious metals. Um, at the same time, the uh, the seasonality has a, a little while longer to run, but not a whole lot longer. You know, it'll, it'll reverse pretty soon too. And so if we get two big negative factors on the technical side, we should expect gold and silver to correct at that point. Unless, Carrie, and here's the, the really interesting part of the story, yeah. is that um, eventually fundamentals are going to just swamp these little technical factors. And we'll see, you know, an, a, a, the wrong time of the season and uh, a, a really, really negative COT report coincide, but precious metals will continue to go up. They'll just blow right through this, this technical stuff because physical demand outstrips the supply. And when that happens, um, then all bets are off. You know, from a technical standpoint, it's just going to rocket. And, you know, we'll see gold and silver gap up, you know, 100 bucks a day for gold, 10 bucks a, a day for silver. You know, we'll have some days like that uh, yeah. until we get to some really what would seem like unrealistic levels. Now, you know, you can see silver at $100 an ounce very easily based on fundamentals. Oh, yeah. And and so technicals won't matter when that thing really gets going. You know, when that when that train starts to leave the station, we need to be on board because it's going to be very hard to find physical gold and silver at anything like reasonable prices by today's standards. So, you know, that's coming. And in the meantime, these these squiggles are fun. The the up squiggles are exciting, uh, but we shouldn't lose sight of the real prize, which is ten thousand dollar an ounce gold. 100 to 200 dollar an ounce silver uh, which are out there somewhere let's say in the next five years those two things are fairly likely so given that we should still be adding regularly to our positions whenever we have some free cash buy some silver coins or some gold coins store them yeah. in a safe place and then just let 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 this you know back and forth stuff play out without investing too much emotion into it, without letting it keep you up at night one way or the other, you know, either you're so happy or you're, you're freaked one or the other. <laughs> don't, don't let it interfere with your sleep and with the living of the rest of your life. You know, go on with life, but know you're on the right side of history when you're adding to your precious metals portfolio. Yeah, I think uh, that's real important to keep it in perspective. Don't constantly look at the uh, price of gold like we often do. Uh, it's not going to help you any and it's not going to make any difference. Just go about your life, but understand what's happening and take the right steps accordingly. So, hey, one other thing related to gold, John, is Mnuchin was at, uh, where was he, Fort Knox in uh, Kentucky, and he let us know that all the gold is still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did he say? Something like, I assume it's all still there. You know, he saw some gold, right? And, yeah. uh, and assumed that was all there was supposed to be. So, who, you know, who knows? The, these guys um, are really wedded to the establishment narrative, which makes sense because they are the establishment. You know, they assume the, the system is being run right oh, because yeah. they're running it. Mm -hmm. And that, that what the government says it's doing is actually what it's doing because they're the guys who are saying it. You know, 
know, and, and so you, you can't really trust anything that you hear out of government these days. No economic report is is necessarily um, accurate because they, they basically focus group this stuff in effect. You know, they, they publish stuff that will help the markets behave the way they want the markets to behave. Same thing with Federal Reserve statements. And, and uh, you know, Trump is the only one who's not paying attention to the impact on, on the markets of his words. Yeah. Uh, and the problem with him is that he what he says is so random that it doesn't really, you know, it probably nets out to zero at this point. You know, it just doesn't have any impact because some of it is wildly positive and some of it is wildly negative. And, and, uh, and so we kind of discount what we hear coming out of the president's mouth. But unfortunately, the market still listen to the uh, the mainstream guys. You know, when the, when the Fed speaks, the stock market goes up. Regular as clockwork. Yeah. Uh, and that is because the Fed is saying things designed to make the stock market go up. Uh, so are. whether it's true or not. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, I just think the whole thing, Fort Knox, is pretty, pretty entertaining. You know, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> I don't believe anything. Till, till no. we actually see it audited and actually see a few bars drilled and and see an inventory. Uh, I don't believe any of it. How can well, you? Well, see, the, the thing is, Kerry, the, the physical demand in the East, in, in Russia and India and China, exceeds the available gold that's coming out of gold mines year after year, mm -hmm. which means the balance must be made up somehow, right, with yeah. Western gold. So where where is that gold? It's in central bank vaults mostly. So some central banks in the West are shipping their gold to China and India and Russia. And it might be us, might be Great Britain, although Great Britain is pretty much out of gold. Apparently. Yeah, they sold it off. Yeah. Well, so yeah, yeah. So they say that they, they don't have anything left in reserve. So somewhere that gold is being found and shipped east. And we won't know or we may never know where it came from, but it's a pretty safe bet that the U.S. as ostensibly one of the biggest holders of gold is one of the parties that's able to ship gold east and, and uh, probably is one of the ones doing it. So we probably have less it. than we say we do. And the, the other thing that central banks have been doing, which also lowers the amount of gold in their vaults, ha, has been um, um, working through bullion banks where, for instance, J.P. Morgan Chase will take some of the Fed, of the um, U.S. gold and sell it on the open market in order to depress the price of gold with the proviso that they have to give that gold back to the government at some point. In other words, it's a gold swap, which mm -hmm. makes the big bullion banks short gold um, and requires them at some point in the future to buy gold on the open market to return it to the central bank that gave it to them in the first place. Well, this creates um, the, the potential for a short squeeze, right, in, um, and a in gold and silver when the central bank or when the bullion bank has to go in the market and buy it in order to make good on their promise to the central bank, but they don't find any out there. So they have to pay whatever it costs. Um, and, you know, that that has been hanging over the market for more than a decade uh, now, where years. it was clear yeah. that they had a gigantic short position that someday, somehow, they were going to have to close out. And they just haven't done it yet. But see, this this stuff could all happen at once, where um, have to the COMEX the defaults, <laughs> yeah. uh, have the COMEX default, have the have it become clear that the big bullion banks have to get gold from somewhere because they got a gigantic short position and they're in there buying, and have China and India and Russia continue to buy, and then have a lot of investment demand where, where individuals finally decide they want their gold and silver, um, and they're willing to pay whatever to get it. And so you have that all happen at once. Mm -hmm. And gold goes from $1,500 an ounce to $3,000 an ounce in a relative eye blink, you know, in a month it happens. It's just like it, uh, what happened with Bitcoin mm -hmm. over the past year, you know, when it went up a thousand and some percent, same thing could right. happen in precious metals because the gold and silver markets in terms of what's available out there are not that much bigger than Bitcoin was when it started its run. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of global capital flowing into precious metals will send them to the moon and a lot of global capital flowing into pr precious metals, you know, let's say 5% of investable <clears throat> capital that exists in the world right now would uh, lead to um, a drying up of inventory. There wouldn't be any left to buy and you just won't be able to get it. You know, that, that, is a completely possible scenario given how much paper exists in the world versus how much precious metals exist in the world. Uh, so, you know, the, the time will come when gold and silver start acting like Bitcoin, mm -hmm. where it just goes up and up and up and you hit 
you know, one barrier and it blows through that barrier and then it blows through the next barrier and, and nobody can believe it. And everybody's jumping on board because it's going to go to infinity. You know, we're, we're going to have one of those situations, at which point the old old school gold bugs will start selling to the new people who uh, who are coming into the market and paying panic prices. Yeah. And and then, you know, the, the gold bugs will be the ones with a lot of capital where the futures contract players and the, the guys with government bonds and bank accounts will uh, have a lot less capital than they do now. So there will be a changing of the guard in the, the capital markets in which holders of real assets gain a lot of sway and get to fund what they want to fund and get to make a lot of decisions. Hopefully that'll lead to a saner world, you know? We can only hope. I wouldn't count on that. But yeah, it could all wind up with a commercial signal fail, which is where all of those guys who sold the, the gold short in uh, in the futures market uh, are called to deliver, and then they won't be able to. And then uh, <laughs> that ain't going to be a real pleasant scenario, well, is it? No, no, Kerry. One, one of the things that you hear out there is uh, people dissing gold bugs who, who expect a COMEX default by saying, that's idiotic. The, the COMEX can never default. It can always just settle in cash if it mm -hmm. has to on these futures contracts, Yeah. which, you know, they seem to be missing the point that that is a default. Right. You know, if they say, yeah. oh, we don't have any gold, but we'll, we'll give you cash in order to close out your account. Okay, you get the cash, but then the whole world knows there's no gold. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that in effect, momentous. they've defaulted on the, their promise to deliver gold on those futures contracts. And see, at, you know, at that point, um, a $500 update in gold becomes pretty reasonable, you know, because yeah. everybody will realize there's none left. And if they want to get any, they got to pay whatever it takes to get it. And uh, and so the the bids are just going to chase the offers through the roof on that day. And mm -hmm. that's going to be fun to watch. Hey, and, you know, I think there was a thing they changed. They changed the contracts, uh, the futures contracts for gold. Uh, it used to be they had to settle in gold, and then they could settle in cash. Now, from what I understand, they can settle in shares of GLD. So that's just <laughs> another form of paper here, right? And what will that do to the price of GLD when they start settling yeah. in shares of it? I mean, come on. It's, uh, it's getting absurd. And, I think we're going to see, see this happen. At that point, the, the mainstream economists will be saying, but they are settling in gold. You know, there's no shortage of gold. They're giving you GLD shares. Yeah, who yeah. Want that? <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. 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 I mean, and who knows what GLD has? Yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother well, discussion for a whole nother day. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. It's encouraging at 1300. Uh, we're not expecting insane things to happen, but we wouldn't be surprised by it. Right. Well, someday insane things will happen. We just don't know if it's. This yeah. week, you know, right. the, the day will come when precious metals start behaving like cryptocurrencies. And mm -hmm. especially, you know, you got to remember how tiny the silver market is. Oh, it yeah. is dwarfed by the gold market because we use silver up. Mm -hmm. It's an industrial metal as well as a monetary metal. And a lot of it that is in your cell phone, for instance, or some of the chips in your computer or even in some solar panels um, won't be recycled back into the market. It's just too small of an amount to be worth that. And so it'll just disappear when when that device is no longer needed and it gets scrapped. So silver's being taken off the market at an accelerating rate because of industrial uses. At the same time where where there's not all that much silver being mined relative to the you know the size of the global economy. So silver is a very tiny market, which makes it very volatile, which means that when the good stuff happens that we're talking about, it'll just rocket. You know, silver will be a, a, an amazing, I don't want to say investment, because at that point it, it becomes kind of a speculation, but mm. um, it'll be an amazing winner for people over the stretch of a couple of years while all this plays out. So, and, you know, you should have some silver coins <laughs> yeah. if you're worried about what's happening in the world today. That, that's a really good, relatively cheap thing to hedge your bets with. Yeah. Well, I remember one guy, I can't remember, I interviewed him, but I can't remember his name, said that uh, silver is going to be the worst investment in the world till one day when you wake up, it'll be the best investment in the world. <laughs> and on that day, it'll be gone. Yeah. So it'll only be a good investment for the people who bought it while it was the worst investment. You got and, it. And um, that that's how really tiny, very volatile markets work. They just float along and they, they back and they fill and they stay range bound. And then boom, one day 
they they just rock it one direction or the other. You know, volatile markets can also go down. But in this case, silver is already down. So the, uh, the the rocketing part will probably be upward and it'll be spectacular to watch when it happens. Yes, it will. And I think we're going to see it sooner rather than later, but it might not be for a while. Don't uh, get too excited. Expect a pullback here. But breaking that 1300 number with uh, such authority at 1306, 1307 is certainly a bullish event and nobody can say it's not. Anyway, John, that's it for today. So questions, comments, kl at kerrylutz.com. Email us. Twitter feeds at Carrie Lutz, Facebook pages, Financial Survival Network, John's site, Dollar Collapse, our site, FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com, and sign up for both of our newsletters because you're going to want to see what's in them real soon. That's the way it's looking, John. We'll see you next week. Great. Thanks, Carrie. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free... And we're going to feel very smart and we'll have the capital that we need to go on and do positive things in life. Uh, whether this is the beginning of that or not is, is unknowable mm. until, you know, until we have some uh, history behind it. But... Uh, the fact that it's happening now is fun to watch. You know, it's really exciting to see uh, your bets pay off. You know, the things you own go up in value. So everybody in the gold space should enjoy this, <laughs> however long it lasts. And, uh, you know, there's no real reason to take profits at this point. There's there is reason to add more over time, you know, and that's what we should be doing. Well, I agree with you. I think that that 1300 number is significant in that it represents so much technical resistance and gold has for the past four months, five months, Sean has not been able to break through it. It's gotten close. It get to 1270s, 1280s, then, and then it would pull back. It would get slammed. What's really interesting here is that gold has really for the past couple of weeks, just kind of continuously gone on Get hit one day or two days, eight, ten dollars the ounce, pop back up the next day, and silver is. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's August 28th, 2017. Well, summer's almost gone. Have you seen gold today? Oh, and before I start, Email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. I'm only about 25 or 30 emails behind now. I should be caught up by the end of the day. But the big story, have you seen the price of precious metals, particularly gold? Gold is now, it's up uh, as we're speaking, it's right around noontime on Monday. Gold's up $15.20 the ounce, according to Kitco, trading somewhere in that 1306-1307 range. Silver up even higher as a percentage. Silver's at 1734, up 29 cents on the ounce. What does it all mean? Well, John, Rab John Rabino, dollarcollapse.com is here to discuss. John, good morning. Morning, Kerry. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it almost looked like there was something wrong with the uh, gold truck. Been in the same boat. So what we're seeing, I guess it's a, a roundabout way of saying it. What we're seeing here is higher highs, higher lows. And I think that is, is a big deal. But we do have the overhang of that COT report. And the COT has not been wrong for over a decade. And I doubt it's going to start to be wrong now. What I'd anticipate is a pullback in the next few days. I don't know, haven't looked at the economic data coming up. I think GDP is coming up. So GDP is going to be some crazy number that will be revised down. And that will be the justification to slam gold. And it'll go down to 1280 or 1275 and start consolidating for the next increase. That's that's pretty much my my belief of what's going to happen here, John. Yeah, the, uh, the the past few months have have had two short term technical factors working in favor of the gold and silver market. You know, it's seasonality, uh, which is. In Asia, there are seasons when people buy lots of gold, usually when, when there are a lot of weddings and stuff like that. And that's happening now. So normally you get lots of demand for precious. Above 1300 is, uh, is something that people have been pointing to for quite a while. Oh, when it, you know, when it breaks above 1300, then it's really going to rocket. And, and um, I'm not 
a huge fan of that kind of technical analysis because it seems like trends get broken all the time for mm. no apparent reason. And then, you know, then, oh, well, when the downtrend breaks this, then it'll plunge. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know. When the cradle, I, it never seems, uh, when the bell breaks, yeah. the cradle will rock. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that long term fundamentals are so good for gold and silver means that. It, we shouldn't necessarily be paying too much attention to the short term squiggles because they don't matter because they'll be swamped when the fundamentals really kick in. You know, when the, the major fiat currencies of the mm -hmm. world start to fall in unison instead of irregularly against each other like they're doing now, uh, then real assets like gold and silver will soar in value. You know, that's going to happen. It's out there somewhere. And in the meantime, we should just be accumulating at a, a nice steady rate and anticipate that someday, you know, the prices we pay today are going to look really cheap. I pulled up this morning, it was pointing in a, a strange direction, you know, it was like, like, like up, almost straight up. Yeah, parabolic yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, we'll see if it continues. You know, you never know about these squiggles because there, there are factors that affect the short term trading of gold that, that don't have anything to do with the real fundamentals. It's just, you know, what are uh, the futures contracts guys doing and what's the seasonal situation? And um, lately, the seasonal situation and the uh, the technical factors like the commitment of traders report in, in the futures market, th those have been positive at the same time. And that's been good for gold and silver. They've they've um, risen pretty steadily for the past past few months. And today they're uh, they're going kind of parabolic in a little bit of uh, a way. And that's fun to watch, you know, it's and definitely eventually fun. we know it's going to go way up because the fundamentals, the long term fundamentals are so screamingly positive. Uh, and when that big move starts, it'll look something like this. We can't know if this is the big move or if this is just those, you know, technical and seasonal factors playing out. Uh, but it's nice to see it happen. You know, gold.